describe the project, Chris. I would just I would just like to say I sent uh, the commission a letter. It has a slight typo. Um, we'd like to revise our filing. We filed under the the notice of intent under the redevelopment provisions of, of the Rivers Act. <clears throat> and based on the comments by Mark Stinson and based on our site visit yesterday, um, I think it makes more sense for us to file under the normal Rivers Act provisions, which is a two part test that there's no substantially equivalent economic alternative and that the work is less than 5,000 square feet in area or 10% of the site, whichever is greater. And we've got, <clears throat> based on the previously existing gravel area and the new work, um, the new total square footage is 1,163.5 square feet in size. Uh, and we're proposing to do a total of 1,065 square feet of planting within a currently mown field. And then there's a sig significant additional area that was not shown on the plan as being planted, but we looked at during the site visit that would be to the north and east of the planting area between the proposed planting area and the existing trees that would be unmown and allowed to revert to natural conditions. And under the two part um, Rivers Act, you're not required to do any mitigation, but it makes some sense. This is uh, giving a equal or greater area of of mitigation closer to the river than the existing uh, than the uh, existing and proposed disturbance. Chris, do you want to go over the proposed building or Anne? Um, yeah, thank you, Ward. I, I'd be happy to do that. Um, so my name is Chris Farley. I'm an architect with Kuhn Riddle Architects in Amherst. Um, so the building in question is a storage and support building um, to in order to support the um, uh, the kitchen and the kind of back of house uh, activities of the event barn. And uh, really, uh, uh, and, and it also uh, supports uh, caterers as they uh, do their uh, uh, their work um, at the back of the existing barn. And so, really, the only the only place that that makes sense and that works for the location of this storage building is is behind uh, the event barn, where it's not seen uh, um, from other areas in the event venue. Uh, but it it's located exactly where it needs to be in order to support uh, caterers and and the other activities. Um, we we initially tried to keep the building very close to the existing event barn, but because of uh, a grease trap and a septic tank, uh, we needed to move the building to the south, which is what pushed us into the uh, uh, the edges of the 200 foot riverfront area. Uh, we, we, we located the building, uh, the, the minimum 10 feet uh, setback from the septic tank uh, that was approved by the uh, Board of Health. And, um, and again, that's what pushed us in, in, into that riverfront area. Uh, we, we did our best to locate it um, uh, so that it's functional for the farm, but uh, uh, is, is responding to all the other setbacks on the property. Um, and that's the location that uh, that is shown on the site plan that was submitted as part of the application, and uh, uh, as shown the site as shown on the site plan that we reviewed at the site uh, visit yesterday. One other feature um, that there's proposed to be a couple of uh, infiltration trenches at the edge of the uh, project area. Uh, currently, there's no stormwater. Uh, stormwater technically isn't required for this project, according to Mark Stinson, because we don't have a point source discharge, but um, we thought it made sense to have something to help infiltrate runoff from the building and from the existing gravel area. Mm -hmm. So there would be two linear infiltration swales um, at the edge of the, the development there. Okay, thank you. Um, welcome, Montserrat. Um, let me just recap the little bit that you missed before you were able to join us. The, 
based on a site walk yesterday, it was decided rather than apply under the redevelopment portion of the regulations for work in the riverfront area that would just be done as a standard project subject to the performance standards of no significant adverse impact and no practicable alternative. And so they're talking about no practicable alternative in terms of where the shed needs to be in order to support the functions uh, that, that it was designed for. And in terms of no significant adverse impact, you know, they're going to be replanting an area and leaving another area unmown that in combination will be greater than the area that they're developing uh, within the riverfront area and that the areas that are going to be replanted or, or allowed to grow up are closer to the to the stream than than the impact area. So that's sort of the summary, both from the site walk you missed yesterday and, and a little bit of the meeting that you didn't get to hear. Um, so feel free to ask questions since you didn't see the site. You're welcome to go first, Montserrat. Um, thank you. I don't have any questions at this point. Um, Conservation Commissioners, anybody have questions or comments about what you've just heard and what you've seen? No, no comments. Uh, nothing for me. Yeah, I guess, Ann, you're recused at this point, yes? Yes, I am, yes. <laughs> okay, we'll make that official now of the recording. So, um, all right, I have no questions or comments either. So at this point, I think we can vote to close the hearing and vote on an order of conditions. Does anybody else have anything you'd like to say or, or any questions from the public? All right. Well, I would suggest that what's before us is an opportunity to issue an order of conditions permitting the work as described in the plans and supplemental letter with uh, and I would suggest without conditions. Um, so I guess first we should close the hearing. So all in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 And then uh, does anybody want to propose any special conditions for this order of conditions? No, nothing from me. Nothing, Andy? No, nothing for me. I think they covered everything. All right, so let's take a vote to issue an, an order of conditions permitting the project without special conditions. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. So that's four yeses, zero noes, and one abstention. Um, Thank you. So what I'm gonna do is um, <clears throat> write up the paperwork tonight and drop it off at the town offices for signatures tomorrow. So. If, uh, if any of you commissioners can stop by and, and sign the paperwork, that would be great. If you can't get to it till Monday, uh, we'll just send it out as soon as we get enough signatures to, to send it out. Um, who should I send the uh, the original copy to? Should it go to you, Ward, or to you, Ann? Um, it, can, it can come to the farm if you want. Just put it to my uh, PO Box 63. Okay. Yeah, and then Ward, I can send you a copy of it um, electronically. Sounds good. Thank you. And 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 I can get a copy from Ward. Thank you. Okay. All right. I guess that um, that does it. It's a nice, quick public hearing, just like we like. Uh, thanks for coming in. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, much appreciated. Thanks, Ward. Thanks, Chris. All right, JD, you're up next. Uh, uh, Montserrat wasn't able to go on the site visit, but if you could just give us a brief summary of, of, of the site and what you're proposing to do, uh, that'll be for the record for the recording as well as for Montserrat. So I have a 1.675 acre site on Egypt Road, lot 4-3. And there's a been a delineated wetland that pretty much bisects the property in the middle of it. And I propose to build a building to the west side of it. The building would be at the 100 foot or greater setback from that wetland. And I would have some driveway area in the 50 foot buffer between the building 
in the 50 foot setback, but there'd be no change to anything in the 50 foot setback whatsoever. Um, there's some low undergrowth right there, and I'd probably just mow it to keep it down. Um, that's about it. There's no storm water. There's no more additional storm water being redirected into what we're doing right now. If anything, we're going to redirect whatever we can into the railroad ditches on the west side of the property. So, any uh, questions or comments for JD? No, I don't have anything. No. No. Okay. Uh, then. May I suggest that we issue a negative determination of applicability without conditions, which would permit you to proceed with the work without needing to file for a, an order of conditions. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the vote is unanimous, five to zero. Um, same deal with you, JD. I'm just going to lay out the paperwork to get signatures, and as soon as okay. I get them all, I'll send them to you. Uh, there is a 10 day appeal period uh, okay. from the issuance. And so basically two weeks, okay. um, then you're free to go. go what forward. do I do with that paperwork, Scott? Do I have to file off the deeds or something? Or No, just, if yeah. it were an order of condition, you'd have to register it. Okay. But this is just, uh, you can hang it on the wall and, okay. uh, and admire it, I guess. <laughs> You'll get the building permit application from the FERCOG when I apply for it. So. Um, and the town hall's closed tomorrow on Friday, so it wouldn't be till next week. Uh, oh, tomorrow's Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. The so if, if this, right. If the signatures come on tomorrow, then I might get it out on Friday. It's okay. But otherwise, I've, it might not go out till Monday. I have another month waiting for the planning board, so it's okay. Thank you very okay. much. <laughs> All right, JD. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for everyone's help. Good night. All right. Good night. Mm -hmm. All right, um, minutes. Anybody have any comments about the minutes or corrections? Nope. nope. All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes? Yeah, aye. Um, and then in terms of updates and other business, the only thing that I have is just what you already know, because I'm forwarding you the messages as I get them from Mickey Marcus that the the Colbert replacement project across from Tom's hot dog is well underway. And uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, Mickey's been on top of it the whole time and is sending us almost daily reports and that he intends to be there when they rebuild the, uh, the channel. Uh, Mickey and I've had email correspondence about it just to make sure that we're on the same page about what kind of a channel is gonna be built in there. And, uh, you know, so far so good. Um, Anybody have any questions or comments about about that? I drive by there every day, so I get a look. Yeah, so it looks like a pretty big operation. There are all those blocks for uh, the retaining wall and this big old culvert, and yeah. Um, any other business or updates? Anybody have anything to share? I was wondering if anybody knows what Mike Bartlett's doing in the sand pit on Westbrook Road. I'm not aware of it. He's he's um, piling a lot of stuff up and moving a lot of earth around. Ah. Like he has some plan. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's any wetlands in that vicinity, but some of that no, might there, be within 100, 200 feet of the Westbrook. But I think at one point he was storing bricks in there, and that was considered to be not a, a permitted use. But I don't know what he might be up to now. Well, keep an eye on it. If it looks like anything that triggers our jurisdiction, let me know. Otherwise, I know I, nothing about it. Yeah, I don't think it, I don't think it will. Yeah. I'm always suspicious of him. <laughs> well, if there's nothing else, then I guess we can close the meeting early. Um, well, that was a lot quicker than I expected. Yeah, pretty late. Yeah, um, looks like we've already got something lined up for next month. Um, I can't remember what it is, but um, they wrote to me, but they weren't able to get in on time. Well, there's uh, there's going to be an RDA for um, Pine Plains Estate. So the very last lot on Gray Oak Lane, uh, the one that's closest to the 
fish in game land. And so they're likely to come within 100 feet of that wetland. So it looks like they're already in the process of filing. Um, what, is, <clears throat> what do they want to do? They're going to want to build a house on that lot. Yeah. It, you know, it's uh, relatively flat. And if they can stay 50 feet away, it'll probably be another easy thing for us. But it's not always clear for me um, where the wetland is in relation to where they plan to to either not only build the house, but what other uh, site work might might go on as part of it. So I basically told them that there was when I walked out there, I told them the wetland line looked like it was about 50 feet behind the big dirt pile that's there. And if they thought they were going to be within 100 feet of the wetland, then they should file with us. And I got a comment right back right away saying, OK, we're going to file. We'd like to get on your agenda for the next meeting. So there's that. And then somebody had written to me about, um, you know, nuisance vegetation removal at the Tritown Beach um so that might come to us as well next month or maybe it'll be later than that i don't really know what the timeline is was there something at on christian lane i think you had there was an email a while back about you know, mm -hmm. well it doesn't matter I, I don't recall what it was yeah i don't remember um yeah oh, i'm not sure was that the town with the culvert there yeah maybe it's the culvert thing yeah i see flagging there but i don't think we have anything pending yet for filing hmm. is there anything on the old castaways would they come for us if they have to do something new scott or is that still like grandfathered in if they had to I think it, if they stay within the footprint of the developed area, they don't really need to come to us. But if they are going to go beyond that, then certainly they would because they're within 200 feet of that great swamp brook. Um, but I have not heard anything about what's intended for that site, except for the, you know, the rumors of what kind of facility it might be. But, you know, at this point, nothing has moved in our direction yet. All right, then I think it looks like we may be done. Okay, or I, see work, I see work is ongoing at uh, Hurley Park. So yeah. The pine trees are all yep. down and gone. And... Yeah, somebody had left me a message saying that they were wanted to talk to me about tree clearing and, and uh, that the town was doing. And I said, I wonder if that's Hurley Park. And, I called back and left a message, but I never got a call back. So maybe they got their questions answered by somebody else. But uh, I did notice the trees coming down. I think it's very hard for them. They got to work around all the uh, school schedules, whatever games they have. You know, they can only do so many, so much work for a week <laughs> or <a> day. <laughs> yeah, and that was a busy time. All the baseball and soccer and softball stuff. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next week, you. Uh, next month, and probably sooner because we're going to need to do some site visits. So yep. stay tuned. Okay. Right. Thanks, Scott. Good night. Right. Good night. Good night. Take care.